Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 25. My name is Keith. I'm here with my best bud, Doug. How you doing, man? How's it treating you? It's kind of looking out your window there. It's kind of yeah. stormy. I like it. It is a little stormy. You know, I've got uh, live weather here, but... Uh, you do. You do. I I'm do not have live inside. weather. I'm stuck inside. Lots of articles to look up, lots of trailers to see. Um, one thing I'm really interested about, I'm losing my headset, uh, is a video game that we're going to talk about later, but not to jump too far ahead. Yeah, Got some, uh, Doug's excited. interesting news as well. You yeah. can tell he's excited whenever he brings up losing the main topic. He, no. He's losing his equipment. He gets excited whenever we, you know he throws that main topic out there. Let right me get up. back okay. on track here. Oh, he's got coffee, ladies and gentlemen. We, it's going to be a good show. If and a Super Nintendo coffee, which mug. I absolutely love that mug. By the way, that's awesome. Uh, Doug and I are huge. Oh, it's got the Famicom logo on the backside and the traditional Super. You know what's funny? I'm going to share a little bit of trivia with you all <clears throat> that I heard recently. Um, and this will this will be a gimme. So all these years, what is it that Mario always says? What's his catchphrase? I believe, and I'm probably wrong, it's a me, Mario. You're right. However, you are also wrong. Yeah. Everyone assumes that he's saying, it's a me, Mario. Like, like an Italian accent. It's a me, a Mario. No. Uh, it's Japanese. It's sume, which means sume is super. He's saying oh. Super Mario in Japanese. So sume, it's sume is super, and he's actually saying it's sume Mario, Super oh, that's... Mario. That's what he's been saying this whole time. But everyone just assumes he's Italian. He's got an accent. It's me. So there you go. That's your but fun that's fact. That's really cool on both levels, though. It actually is. Uh, yeah, I was watching this podcast where the, they were talking about that, and I was like, oh, wow, that's actually pretty cool. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. So there's your fun fact for the day. Your nerdy fun fact. There you go. Maybe that's a new promo. We, we each find a new for, nerdy fun fact for the top of the, top of the show. We need to. That was good. I like yeah. that. All right, man. You ready to do nerd news? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, let's keep the nerd news. Nerd All right, let's get this share going. So the first one we're going to talk about as you're sharing is Microsoft is changing one of their uh, panels called Control, Control Panel. Panel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been strong for about 39 years now. You know, everybody's had the Control Panel. What they're going to is more like a mobile setup, in my opinion. It's Windows Settings app. So this website doesn't have a picture of Windows Settings app. I don't know if you can find one I for can. us. Yeah, totally. But as I'm describing it, uh, to me, Control Panel kind of gives you all of your categories uh, broken down. And then the Settings app uh, is, you got to search for it, in my opinion. I don't know if you take it the same way, but Settings seems to be harder to find exactly what I'm looking for. But I could just not be used to it. No, dude, no, you're spot on. <laughs> um, so first of all, Microsoft has been saying they're going to get rid of the control panel interface since Windows XP. The OG uh, one, which is this one you see here, has been around since about XP. And it's um, been great, in my opinion. I know exactly I like where it. I need to go to find yeah. something. Yeah. I like it. They've been wanting to update it for a while now. Their first attempt was what they did was they added a front layer navigation before you could get to this. And it is exactly what you said. It's this one here, uh, which is a listing of all of the categories on the left with a search feature now there's a way you can if you type to the top control panel uh, up in this new interface it would just take you whoops it would take you to the old uh, the old school one and that's usually what i do oh, okay. <laughs> but the fact that they're getting rid of this i'm like Ugh. Uh, now they didn't say when they did say that the latest update will be coming out is um i think in the fall it's their 24 h2 they and that's their their designation 24 is the year uh h designates like the wind there's usually a one and a two and so that'll be in the fall however there's rumors that uh windows 12 is coming down the way on the horizon so they may wait till that um they also microsoft recently confirmed that they removed 3d paint from the microsoft microsoft store which it didn't really take off it was kind of cool to play with a little bit but yeah. it wasn't very good but they've been wanting to get rid of this control panel for a long time i'm like you uh i'm a fan of this old school control panel. And I don't know if it's just because I've been using it for so long and I'm so used to it. Yeah. I can tell you, I ain't 
I ain't cra- I can find my way around this one, but I ain't crazy about it. It feels a little like the Mac one. Mac system uh, is is what it is. Where Mac does the same thing. Everything on the left, you can search it. It feels that way, and I'm not even that crazy about the system one on Mac, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. So I don't know, man. I, I guess, but I, I'm going to give it a chance, and I'll get used to it. I uh, that's my thing with OSs. I just end up getting used to it over time. Yeah. But I'm like you. I ain't crazy about this. Well, you know, the old uh, line of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, I'm sure most of us uh, agree, or most Windows users agree with us that it works fine. I well, find exactly what I need. I'm for updating it. But to me, when they dramatically move things around, um, they got to have a reason. Like maybe there's more settings and it doesn't fit in the old window. I could get yeah. that. But here's the thing. If I go back to this one, you can't tell me they couldn't keep this same format of the old one, but just make it like where the graphics are different and maybe yeah. make, make the system headings buttons, keep it in the same way. I like the way they broke up the categories in the old one. And yeah. it was just two columns and whatever you wanted was in a sub to me, they could have kept this format and reskinned it. And I yeah. think that would have gotten them what they wanted, but to, instead they're totally changing the navigation and I'm sure they have a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you that the search settings prior in the old one sucks the search settings are better like if you search for something you can relatively find it for the most part so that has gotten better i gotta give him credit there you know i still uh pour one out for my boy clippy i still miss it. <laughs> there's people that have uh, we talked about this they've integrated uh ai into clippy it's kind of scary uh, scary time <laughs> well there were rumors that microsoft was going to do that at some point with copilot but uh <laughs> They did he's going to be mad that everybody drug him down to the test bar. I know. I know. He was annoying, though. <laughs> All right. You ready for the next one? Yeah. All right. We talked very briefly about this last year, and it's an update, but there is drama in the chess world. Now, we're at Wired Nerdy. Everybody agrees chess can be kind of nerdy, but it's a thinking person's game. Uh, so this is an update to this. Essentially, let me give you the background history. Doug, I don't know if you remember this at all. We we talked about I, this. I do a remember. Bit. It was very strange the way he cheated. I believe. Well, it, it was hearsay. I, I'm so getting let, too far ahead. Okay. No, no, no. Let me let me give you the background first. So there are two big time, and this is funny. It sounds like it's out of a movie. I'm sure they'll make it a movie someday. Uh, there are two big time chess players. Number one in the world. He's like the the new Bobby Fischer. He's like he's the Michael Jordan of chess. Is Magnus Carlson, and then there's uh, and he's probably around our age. Uh, then there's a young man, Hans Neiman, who has risen in the ranks and being hailed as the next big thing. Well, they went through series of rounds of playing against each other and everybody's blown away because Hans actually had beat Magnus or gotten close to it. And I don't know, it was cat and mouse game kind of a thing. Um, famously, Magnus, during a live stream, because they they play remotely or they can play in person. There's all different ways that they can handle it. Walked away from the chessboard. And only like a day later said he walked away because he claimed that Hans was cheating. Well, then the internet started to speculate, well, how's he cheating? How's that even possible? And the internet did what the internet does. And they basically suggested, well, it's got to be anal beads that vibrate, that tell him what to move, move Which where is on the... the weirdest thing I've ever heard. So Hans was like, that's not true. I'll play naked. And and then everybody's like, yeah, but if they're inside of you, blah, 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 you'd have to be inspected. It was a whole thing. Well, what happened in that time? They've not competed since. Um, Magnus wasn't going to just vow not to play him ever again, says he's a cheater. And then uh, chess.com, which is a ranking system, meaning for you to become a big deal in the chess world, you got to rank in that. And it's digital. They had sided with magnus to a certain extent and they had revoked hans's access to chess.com and that's how you rank up as as a result of these accusations so um that's where we left off now what's happening is since this time hans sued both chess.com and magnus it was like three million dollars or something like that and he said it was defamation it was was a hundred million dollar lawsuit i was way off hundred million dollar lawsuit and he said it was defamation of character and it hurt his brand and it wasn't true. It was unfounded. And it really was not founded in any way. It was a lot of the internet and that sort of thing. Um, and people saying that, look, Neiman is so good. It, he has to be cheating. 
because Magnus is the Michael Jordan, right? This guy can't possibly be this good. Well, they settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. Chess.com reinstated Hans in good standing to, to go up in the rankings. And when that happens, Hans vowed to become the best chess player in the world and to basically get revenge on Magnus and beat his pants off. So what's happened now, there's been a tournament that's been going on. And guess who it comes down to at the very last? These rivals. Yeah. So again, September, uh, Magnus Carlsen and Hans are going to go at it again since this whole controversy. And it sounds like something out of the WWE, man. Like, <laughs> it sounds interesting. It, so it's it's interesting. Now, I thought it was interesting. Some of these prizes can be really big. Like sometimes they're million dollar prizes. But this particular tournament, it says the winner of the Carlson Neiman match will head into the title match to compete for the top spot to share for their share of one hundred and seventy five thousand dollar prize pool in Paris. Um, that's a decent amount. But I've heard that some of them can be larger, like the world chess and things like that are a lot higher. So there you have it, man. Drama in the in the chess world. And by the way, streaming chess and people watching it is huge, yeah. huge business. Um, it's a very popular watched sport now. What are your thoughts on all this, Dougie? Uh, I've played chess a couple times. You know, I don't know all the proper moves. I don't know the strategy at all. We have a really good friend, uh, Joe. I know he's really good at chess. He tries to teach me a little bit, teaches his kids, teaches our other friends. So we'll have to get his opinion on this. I'd really like to hear that. Yeah, chess is fun, man. I've always enjoyed it. I'm not very good at it, but I do know all the moves. And there are some strategies, whether they're good or not, you know. Um, But yeah, chess is fun. Yeah, my wife beats me in checkers, so there you go. (laughs) You You never played. You know a good way to learn chess and this is how i learned is to play the original og battle chess have you played that before i've seen it it's got the uh, russian Character. grandmaster on it doesn't it uh no uh, well yes i'm thinking the, of something uh, else you're thinking of, of grandmaster chess uh um, oh okay here i'm gonna show you here real quick okay. so battle <laughs> gave me the warcraft thing no, the one i'm referring oh, to yes i have played this yes yeah. this is the one with the actual uh characters yeah this is the one i played og what was fun about it was you learn the moves but when you go to take a character out it would go to a cool like cut scene or it oh, would nice. show them like actually fighting and this is what i learned on and because i love playing the game it was just fun watching the animations and that sort of, so this is what i played and kind of made it i don't know a little bit a little bit more uh, interesting as a kid um i think what you're thinking of grand master chess uh game video game now at one point the 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 chess game right here yep that one right chess master right here so i've played that a lot now this one was hailed as being really good because of the ai in it for the time back in the day yeah yeah this is what you were thinking of and uh yeah and we've talked about how ai can like totally dominate these things now oh big time now, what you could do if you were really interested in playing, you could have Chat GPT open, uh, and there's like bots and stuff. They could teach you how to play oh, and help you to good. get better. So, if you're ever interested in it, but there you go, the chess world. Very interesting. The uh, next story, uh, it was a good one. I'll let you uh, take it. Uh, yeah, it's actually an extension of what we talked about last week. You gave us a breakdown of the new uh, Google and help me. It was the Google photo ai stuff right yeah so you can take a picture of yourself and then add backgrounds and stuff just by asking google gemini what you want to put in it yeah and that keynote we covered last week has been kicking up a lot of dust and there's a really good article on the verge and it points out we've known this for a while but i think we're there and that is growing up over time uh photos were the definition of truth well now that's all changed. And this article is really good because it points out we're now on the precipice, the edge of that changing because of what Google's done and how easy it is to use and how convincing AI manipulated photos are. And they gave some examples inside of here. Um, so we've already seen this in like politics. And the example they gave is the Tiananmen Square, which happened in China with the tanks and the one lone person standing in front of it. There are iconic images like that or images from the Depression. Like there are things that we think of that are examples of what's been going on uh, in the world. 
Well, they took some of these base images and what we talked about last week, and they edited it with the new Pixel 9 and with the new feature set. And here's one photo. As you can see, it's a very serene, beautiful uh, lake, I guess it is, with a little bit of a you know campfire on the right. And look what they put into it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at the same. It's a helicopter. It looks real. I mean, the smoke yeah. it looks like uh, how smoke would act and kind of billow out from the craft. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, helicopter. Uh, is that a that's a military grade, right? Uh, yeah, it's something I don't recognize. But, yeah, but it it's got smoke billowing out of it, and it looks like a military helicopter crashed oh, yeah. into the water. It looks yeah. legit. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say the next, the talk about the next one. If oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so this the, is crazy. The next one is what I'm worried about. It's uh, if you're going to try to frame someone as a bad person or as a drug user or something like that. So explain what you're seeing here, Doug, on the first picture. So this is the before. The first picture, it looks like a young uh, woman in her apartment. Uh, got some cleaning supplies, exercise stuff in the back. She's sitting then, on the floor, right? Yeah, sitting on the floor. Then we go to the next photo. Oh. <sighs> And someone has put in a tourniquet, some suspicious, uh, maybe drug paraphernalia and drugs on the floor. Wine, uh, the wine bottle was there. It wasn't in the first one. I had to look again. Yeah, it was not. Yeah. But I mean, talk about if you're mad, you can uh, frame somebody or put them in a bad light on social media. And, you know, putting something on social media, it never leaves the Internet. Yeah. And it looks legit real. The wine bottle even has a slight shadowing at the mm -hmm. base. Yeah. Uh, it's got a syringe. It's got lines of Coke. <laughs> it looks like she's partying in a bad oh, yeah. way. It's like, whoa. And it, if I glance at this, I'll be like, oh, my goodness. Ah, it's scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, you, you go through the article. They have one more, like, or they have a few more here. So here's a photo of an empty street. It's just a, not really quite an alleyway. It just looks like a typical street yeah. in a town or a city, right? What do you see there, Doc? <laughs> yeah, you go from empty street to looks like a fatality accident. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's some attention to detail. Looking right by the car, it looks like broken glass. They uh, took time to add that. There's a little debris pile uh, between the motorcycle and what we probably think is a dead body. So Yeah, there's a, it's like a white tarp with blood all over it. I yeah. mean, it's just crazy. The next one is interesting. Go ahead. What do you see in the before? <laughs> so we have our first uh, image, and it's just a subway. I don't really see much going on. You know, graffiti on the wall, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Just a normal subway. Then we go to the next photo, <sighs> and there is what appears to be a bag, lots of wires, and smoke coming out of it. So that would make you think there's a bomb in the yep. subway. And it looks legit. I mean, you can even see the shadowing on the wires, and oh my god! You know, this is scary. Just think if someone uh, tweeted this. Oh, uh, everybody oh, yeah. looking at their phones, and they're in the subway. So it's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. Like you don't know what's real anymore. Um, you know, and it has in the article iconic photos. Like, so here uh, I'm going to yeah. try to jump Please. into the future. Yeah. and say they are going to use a a keyword maybe five, ten years down the road, hopefully. Of AI terrorism. Oh, that, that, I'm saying it right oh, now. You heard it here first, first AI folks. AI terrorism, going, five to ten years. It, it may happen. It may happen. In on this uh, article, they have like iconic photos: the moon landing, the lady from the Depression. Uh, they even took the Iwo Jima flag being planted and they replaced it with a pirate flag with the Jolly Roger. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is definitely uh, scary. Mm -hmm. Um. So what's interesting, I got to researching this a little bit. There is software that exists that can recognize altered photos and whether they've been AI altered. That's now, funny. there's a reason why it hasn't caught on and not been used. And the, the key part of it is about standards. So we've talked about this before in the podcast where USB, for example, the reason why USB connectors are a standard is because everyone in the industry agreed on what the shape of it should be, what the architecture should be. Apple agreed, Intel agreed, Microsoft agreed, everybody agreed. And so devices have the same USB because of standards. It takes a very long time often for standards to get agreed upon. Same goes for software. PDF file. If I send you, Doug, a PDF file, 
-hmm. you should be able to open it. Do you know why? Standards. standards. Yeah. That's right. Everything can open because they all agreed. All right, PDFs can all be opened this way. This is how you know it's consistent. What they got to do is with the software that they have, they have to come up with an agreed upon standard to where when a photo is taken and then manipulated, no one can get around it to where there's an automatic code that's injected into the photo. It, think of it almost like a dollar bill, counterfeit dollar bill. You know, what is it? Your cop, you know, when you hold it up to the light, isn't there a strip in it um, for counterfeit dollar bills? What is that? Yeah. Uh, so there's multiple things. Uh Take your 20 or your 100, there's a holographic face that you can only see in the light. Then there is like a rainbow colored strip. Yep. So those are things, right, that help prove counterfeit or not. Think yep. of that in the same regard for digital photography. They can embed those same things inside of a photo so That's you can good. find out if it's counterfeit. Unfortunately, we're quite a ways off from that because the entire industry has to agree on a standard. And you have companies like Google made their announcement with that keynote being able to do this right now with no standards. Mm -hmm. ooh, it's what you said. People are going to start using it uh, for negative intent. One, well, I would almost want us to at least uh, for now, I know a standard might take a while, but get some kind of watermark. This yeah. has been uh, edited by AI. Just yeah. a, kind of a disclaimer down at the bottom. There should be because these don't have they made these for this article and they're very convincing and they oh, use yeah. Google's magic editor. <laughs> and it looks, uh, I mean, who Legit. Sports, uh, Coke off the carpet. But well, anyway. and what's crazy is even if you look at it on the carpet, it looks like it's settled in the, the it's carpet. in the, yeah, it's in the carpet grains. It's crazy. <laughs> it matches the texture. You'd have to be a really good Photoshopper to do this by hand with Photoshop mm -hmm. with, you know, mask and things like that. So, Brave new world, my friend. Don't trust everything you see and no. don't trust claims uh, as well. And here's the other thing. It, what about this? It works in reverse. What if the picture was legit? Let's say oh. she is a druggie, this yeah. picture of this girl. But she claims, no, it's AI. It's AI altered. It works in reverse, you know? You got a point. So it's a weird world, man. It's weird, weird world. <laughs> All right, let's get to your one of your favorite topics here. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. So as you all know, last couple of episodes, I've switched to an iPad. The Google Keynote really didn't uh, catch my attention to suck me back in. So the next thing I'm excited for is the Apple Keynote. And I believe we have a release date, uh, you know, all these rumors and stuff. But September 10th oh. uh, allegedly is the new uh, Keynote date. Yes, and it says here. Uh, as soon as September 20th, these new things that may happen may yeah. go on sale, right? Uh, well, and don't forget to mention iOS 18 with GPT integration. Yeah, we'll be into it. And if it works, I, I hope it works like they want it to work because that's gonna, in my opinion, blow uh, Gemini out of the water. Yeah, and to be fair, this is from Mac Rumors. Essentially, what they're saying is not only will you see an announcement for the iPhone 16. Well, we already know about iOS 18 and the AI integration. We know about that. That is for sure. That's confirmed. You have the iPhone 16. You have a new watch and new AirPods, which is huge, by the way, uh, and potentially even a thinner uh, iPad, which I don't think they will do that because the thinner iPad, they had their iPad uh, event in May. I think they would have announced that then. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling the, the thin. Oh, sorry. The launch of a new iPhone 17 Slim next year is what they're now, saying. I wonder if they'll put, the, I saw that, uh, will they put the Air phrase on the iPhone? Because Air seems to be their thin line. Slim, yeah. And their I've Air stuff's a, really good. Uh, iPad Air, I love it. Mm -hmm. The one thing I've had a problem with is low memory. So I would be looking at getting a bigger capacity later. You're talking about storage, right? Storage, yes, not yep. memory. Yep, yep. Yeah, but you're doing the way you use it is you're putting a lot of content on the device, right? And I like need to draw comics. from the cloud instead. Yeah, yeah, draw from the cloud. Have you done the? Have you done a trick? You have. Have you done the trick yet? We talked about with you can do USB C external yes. storage as well. I, and I actually named it iPad Drive. It's sitting oh, right here. Look at that! Look at you. That I've helps. Got a, uh, that helps. On it. Well, my connector fell off, but yeah, I've got yeah. a USB C dongle. So yeah, so at least that's something you can do. You know. Yeah. Outside of the internal, but you know, people complain about the same thing on the consoles right now. They're saying that you know, like 
one terabyte on an Xbox or a PlayStation is just not enough. The good news is they let you upgrade the internal storage. You obviously can't do that with an iPad. Yeah, and that's the thing. You talk about that with video games. Call of Duty. Oh, I heard about this. Try to find the file size. You may find it faster than me. Okay, 309 gigs for Call of Duty 6. Black is, that, Ops 6. Is, is that the new one? Yeah. I mean, I've got a terabyte uh, hard drive. Good Lord, that takes up so much room. You know what blows me away is I remember when people were throwing a fit that the digital version of Skyrim was 128 gig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, Call of Duty comes up and says, hold my beer. I know. Well, and it's funny. So I had this conversation recently with my son. Now, my son is now in college, and he's starting to get his degree in video game development. So he's only started with like a public speaking course, but they're starting to get into like he was telling me about how they're talking about color theory, where in games, Very you know, cool. blue calms people, red in rates. And we were talking about like how that's used in games. Well, one of the things like we we're talking about is um, he's going to be taking a course on video game psychology and um, also efficiencies. Well, back in the day for Doom, for example, you had we had very limited RAM and storage. So what they had to do with Doom is if you notice when you walk up on a wall, it gets very pixelated. You notice that? Well, so he, was, yeah, he was uh, telling me yeah. he was explaining to me that's called called um, parallaxing. Okay. And, and what it does is when it's away from you, it's actually at a higher bit rate. It's a larger file texture. As you get closer, it switches without you realizing it does a math equation between the player and the wall and it switches to a lower texture and it it, it, it puts less tax on the system for RAM and storage. That way, whenever you package the game, it keeps it small and it also helps with your memory efficiency and your frame rate. Well, now that we have systems with 64 gigs of RAM, and all, he was saying that it's a real problem in the industry, their texture files are huge. So they will have a, uh, he was telling me they'll have like a, a wall, let's say, or it, let's just say it's rocks. He said those rocks will be like, can be two, 300, 500 megabyte or a gig. A rock wall, and guess what? As you walk up to it, it's the same. It, it gets it, it actually. It's the same size. It, it doesn't because they want to maintain fidelity up close. Mm-hmm. Well, the games become huge then, and that's what they're doing. Is they don't care about efficiencies because systems are so beefy now that they don't care about making the games efficient and and trying to find ways of making it look good while staying small. So I thought that was an interesting conversation I had with him just about. Games nowadays. Um, if I can find it real quick, there is a guy that I watch on YouTube, and he takes you into video games, but he takes you where the camera normally does not go. Oh, does he? And uh, I won't. I'm not going to waste our time to find it, but uh, I'll just explain real quick. So he sh- tells you that stuff renders some games. Maybe it renders in front of you, and as you turn, it's rendering as you turn. Then it turns blank. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at my subscribe list. I don't see them. But uh... while we're on that note, um, did you ever play Half-Life? I did. Um, I saw something. So probably a similar guy. He Here's this video at the beginning of, you know how the game starts? You're on a tram, right? Mm-hmm. See the tram yeah. moving? Uh, somebody like that guy, he goes outside of the game levels and look. He found out. Do you know how that tram's moving? It you, you you think it would be like a you tell it to go through the levels, right? Yeah. They couldn't get that to work. So what they did was they were close to launch. At launch, they took a bunch of security guard characters, put them below the tram, and their heads are in the floor. You can't see them. They're walking this path and they are carrying the tram. Oh. That's how they solved it. And somebody saw it when they clipped outside of the level. And then they ended up pinging Valve. And one of the original developer goes, yep, that's how we did it to get by. That's so, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could find the name of that channel. I'll have to uh, look later. I don't want to waste our time. Hey, later. no worries. We can showcase it at another time. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, video, like video said, games it takes you kind of behind the scenes, the program. He shows behind a wall. Like you said, with these guys, there's... Uh, sprites, I believe mm-hmm. that's what a person or a character is named. So these sprites are sitting behind this wall waiting to be loaded into the room. So it's really cool. Yeah, it's neat when you look at how these things are made and and how they get them done because they're pretty complex, believe it or not. So, yeah. 
All righty. Fun times. You ready for the main gig? I'm ready. Let's get into it. All right. Now, I think I had pinged you um, roughly a week ago. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, have you heard about this? It made Splash. It's one of those things that really wasn't on my radar. And I'm going to be honest with you. Disney, who owns Star Wars. I'm so fatigued with Disney news anymore that um, I it just I didn't pay much attention. Yeah. But as things go forward, I'm realizing that this new video game, Star Wars Outlaws, it comes out in a week. It comes out on Friday. And it's created a lot of buzz. They've gotten some early hands-on stuff. So what's interesting about it is that you play a bad guy. And Star Wars, especially Disney, is kind of steered away from that because you're dealing with like gangs and drug running, smuggling, and all that kind of stuff. You know how Disney is. Yeah. Well, the footage of this I saw, it looked fine. Um, but where people's minds are blown is that it's being made by Ubisoft, and they're applying to it a lot of their open world stuff. And so the buzz behind it is that they're saying that they're comparing it to like Grand Theft Auto feel, oh. but with with a Star Wars slant combined with, um you know, like No Man's Sky and the fact that you can actually land on a planet. They were criticizing it, saying that, well, this is better than Starfield because Starfield has cutscenes when you land where this lets you land on a planet and come oh, back. It gives okay. you freedom. Yeah. Um, now, I was, you know, going through and I read an early impression. Now, most of the early impressions don't know what the actual uh, open world is going to be like. The person in the article uh, at Kotaku is where I read it. They basically said that it was on rails. They let them play three different parts. There's a platforming part that's very much like Uncharted, where you're solving puzzles. Then there's a stealth mission where you have to get off of a Imperial Star Destroyer. And that one, you have to cause distractions. And, and then there's a variation also on stealth, um, where you have to use this little character that's your pet to distract people. Uh, so apparently those, Oh, apparently there's a, there's a dog fighting element in space where you can actually do space battles. So they've incorporated these and it's also open world. Um, now the biggest comment I've seen is the game is beautiful. They say like, you just want to stop and walk around and, and I've got footage of it playing right now. This is uh, actual gameplay footage. It's a lot of like Assassin's Creed, like sneak behind somebody, take them out. Right. And you have to sneak around. So there are gun battles in it but they say that you're grossly under power. You're not like Bubba Fett here. You're just, um, you know, a smuggler, a normal human smuggler. Uh, so you're not going to kick down the door and go in guns blazing. You're going to want to hide behind things. You want to take cover. There's a cover system in it. Uh, or you have to like trigger things in the environment or use your companion to distract them. And that's what's going on here on the footage. She sends her little alien cat, like looking thing to push a button which distracts them because something starts moving so that she can hide behind it and hopefully get around them. So this comes out in a week. A lot of people are really excited about it, especially with the the comparisons to Grand Theft Auto, like Star Wars Grand Theft Auto combined with Uncharted combined with Assassin's Creed. Um, What are your thoughts, man? Are you going to pick this up? What are you thinking? It looks really good. You know, I uh, watched a little bit of gameplay, the open world. It doesn't really show you open world. Like you said, they've kind of trapped them in these missions. But if it's truly open world, it truly, you get to kind of pick your uh, way of completing the campaign or mission or whatever it's doing. It's going to be great. And I think a lot of people are excited because prior attempts to have a Star Wars game that focuses on being a smuggler, like a bad bad guy um kind of fell there was a game called 1313 that was supposed to be like bubba fett and it it basically got canceled but people were excited about the footage um there were other games there was one just called i believe it was just called uh scoundrels and it got pretty far in development at ea but then it got canceled when disney bought star wars so it seems like there's been this attempt to squash any type of star wars game that focuses on that's not jedi or not the main character types um but ubisoft um who made Watch Dogs and assassin's creed and you know they're really good open world stuff they entered an agreement with disney and this is their first jump into that um and apparently you see her now she's getting out of the base and you look in the distance she's getting on a speeder bike and i think you can just look in a direction and go there and that feels very that feels very cool. Like if you can just point in a direction and go, look how big this world is. 
Yeah, now she's you, in a fight with these speeder not, bikes. Uh, showing us, we're having that technical issue. Oh, we are. Thank you for saying that. I wonder why. Yeah. Let me give this a shot here. Interrupting you there, Matt. So while you're bringing oh, that up much. real fast, Ubisoft has so many great titles, like you said, Tom Clancy, Assassin's Creed. They do the Far Cry series, lots of sports games. I mean, they have a very good history, and the video's working, so. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm glad you no, said something. Good. I don't know how long ago it stopped, but she basically jumped out of a base, and now she's on a speed ride. But look at the open world. It looks great. You can point in a direction as go. It's very... See, like yep. you see mountains, and like I'm gonna head that way. I wonder. And like you said, the visuals, the background. There's birds flying, or some mm -hmm. kind of creature flying, uh, ships flying overhead. It looks awesome. Yeah, and she now she's going to a town. Yeah, I'm. So I think what people are most excited about are the open world element and why it's being compared to like Grand Theft Auto. Because uh, now you'd be awesome if you could steal uh, speeder bikes or ships. Oh, absolutely. Now. I, <laughs> You I doubt it. This, but has there been a Star Wars open world game before? I don't think there has. Not I'm trying to think. So not fully open world. Okay, so I will tell you the online Knights of the Old Republic is semi open world, but it's okay. kind of canned because it's it's grinding. You know, you can go anywhere you want ish, but you kind of grind. No, not to this magnitude. I will say that um, you get you feel like it's open world when you play Jedi Survivor. But that's more narrative driven. Um, and as you see, here's a cutscene. I guess you can make choices. Did you ever play uh, Knights of the Old Republic? Uh, only a little bit. I think I have it on Epic Games as a free game they gave away. It was really good. It was really good. I was in the Xbox era. Um, and the, if you haven't played it, it's, it's worth a playthrough. I'm hoping it has elements like that into it. Um, but no, not open world where you can consistently go from one place to another with free will to go where you want. It's you, there's always an element. They kind of dance on it. Like they would drop you on um, Jedi survivor. They drop you on a planet. You kind of feel like you can go an area, but it was still, if you look it at the map, on yeah, rail somewhat yeah. ish, you can look in the distance, but you couldn't necessarily go to anything. They yeah. kept you within a path uh, and you had, you know, key things that you had to do this already from what we're looking at here definitely looks more open world i see why people are excited about it so my thing is like if i were to get this i'm gonna wait and see what the reviews are like do yeah. i get it on pc or do i get it on my playstation <laughs> that's, that's a big choice yeah it's the eternal the eternal question you know uh I'm falling out of love with my xbox i'm gonna be honest with you after they they hiked up the the recent uh yeah game uh showcase prices that they have there so but overall Back to this game. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on Game Pass or not. Look, do you see that? It had a wanted. Oh, yeah. She, she stole something. Done something? Yeah. So Maybe this fun. is what they're talking about. Now she's running to her ship. Is this what they're talking about with a wanted system? With, oh. It says Escape the Empire. Yeah, I think there's something up in the left-hand corner. Maybe that's her wanted bar. It is. And look, it's an Imperial. Maybe it is Grand Theft Auto. Oh, very nice. Ooh. See, I hadn't watched this yet. <laughs> she's running. She's getting in her ship. Let's yeah, see what happens. First to for her. both of us here. It yeah. is. Well, I've, I've been reading about it, but I haven't really watched a lot. Now, so I wonder what happens to her warrant that, level. Uh, planet. Yeah, I don't know. Well, she was talking to an Imperial officer. Now, here, she's taken out of the planet. This is very No Man's Sky-ish. So she's putting on her boosters, getting out of the atmosphere. Now, that's the one thing I am kind of upset with uh, Starfield is it cutscenes you to the planet and cutscenes you out of the planet. Now, what they did here, you're in a cloud. You can tell the cloud's got to be where it's like loading the texturing for space, which yeah. why couldn't they have done that on Starfield? There you well, are. Look. I, I understand that. There's got to be some loading scene to the next world or area. So. She still has her warrant level. So now she's in space. Oh, there's TIE fighters coming Ooh, after her. Coming after her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ah, I should not have watched this, Doug. <laughs> Look we at may that. Have to get this. Now she's, uh, her one, her wanted level just went up again. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's because she killed a TIE fighter. Oh. This is very GTA. Now, I wonder what mm. their level of response is. TIE Fighters. Uh... Star Destroyer. Yep. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. And you know what I love about Ubisoft? I love the Watch Dog games. Now, some are better than others. Um, my yep. favorite was Watch Dogs 2. They can do this well. You know, um, so they've proven it. Now, I think you're pretty much stuck to this spaceship. I doubt you can just grab any spaceship in the game. Oh. It'd be cool if they would let you 
rotate them, but I've only seen this is her ship. And they probably do that for good reason. Now she hyperspaced out of there, but look at her warrant level. You, I saw it drop piece by piece by piece as she was jumping. In the check mark, she escaped the Empire. So it is Grand Theft Auto like. Very cool. Huh? Is she gonna land on a planet now? You know, we are maybe a couple <sighs> months, maybe a whole year away from GTA Six, but that is kind of the thing that's gonna cue all the other developers to look at and say, "People love this game. Maybe we should make it similar. We don't want to be copycats." You know. I'm curious as to whether or not. You know how, like, with movies, if a big, like, if Lord of the Rings is going to come out, they will shift the yes. release schedule. I wonder if the same thing's going to happen with GTA. I bet it will. So I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's why my beloved Dreamcast did not do as well. What do you mean? Explain. Didn't that. it come out the same time around the PS2? Or am I wrong? Uh, the timing was a little off. Their issue was they had some marketing issues too. I think they did. Um, it just it didn't take. They also had library issues. They didn't oh, have. Okay. They couldn't compete with Sony's library. I that was the they big were scam. coming out at the same time as another console as well. But they they were they were staggered a little bit. They weren't exactly the same time. I believe yeah. the PS2 already had a foothold in uh, oh, around yeah. the time. But don't quote me on that. I'm sure Brian no, will yeah. correct us. <laughs> Yeah, I believe they, because I know the Dreamcast came out in 99. I'm... Yeah, let's see. When did the... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, November 27th, 98 was uh, Dreamcast's release date. In there you 99 go. in America. Well, you know what? The PlayStation came out in 2000. Oh. March 4th. So it says yeah. uh, November 27th, 98 was Dreamcast, and then PlayStation 2 was 2000, and the GameCube was 2001. Boy, but those I'm were sure good times. Sony though. was beefing up, hey, we're getting ready to release our next console. Oh, I'm sure they were, but Sony obviously kicked their tail in um, with the library. Machine, yeah. You know, I never owned it. <laughs> I always say that. I never had one. I skipped it. I was it big was into great. Xbox. I, was, I had a Dreamcast, then I had an Xbox. Uh, of course, Xbox came out a little after the Dreamcast. So, Yeah, man, so Back to the uh, back on topic. Yeah. yeah, back back on topic. So, are you going to pick this up? What are your thoughts? I mean, after it was this, great. I think I want to see, see how some much reviews. there is to do. Yeah, and some reviews. I really rely on views, whether it's video games, movies, or products. Yeah, you know I, what else I, I do? Trust the word of other people. Do you do this? To me, it's such an investment cost in the game anymore because you're looking at brand new launch seventy dollars that's a lot of money especially if i don't know if i'm gonna have time to play it so sometimes i'll wait on purpose if i'm busy in life like lately i haven't played any video games really because i've been so busy Mm -hmm. outside of pulling up something on my stream deck real quick to jump into but have you do you watch twitch footage do you go to twitch and like watch people play it just to see if it's your jam i do that yeah i have before that's my thing i like to go and watch somebody play a lot of people but uh, i don't follow I don't follow a lot of Twitch players, but I'll go into Twitch, I'll look for the game, and I'll just watch a little bit of gameplay. Yeah. And then I'll go read some reviews and see what their impressions are of like, well, how good is the open world and the things that I know I care about. And then that helps me decide. What usually will swing me is if it's getting rave reviews, they're almost always right. Mm-hmm. So I remember that with uh, that cat game. It was called Stray. I was kind of on the fence about it, but then I started seeing reviews and and then I was like, okay, the reviews are rave. So I've got to, I got to do it. And it was unbelievable. Most of the time, if a game has good rave reviews, it's almost always good. You can't say that about movies. No. Yeah. Game reviews are a little better in my opinion. Well, and for the most part, uh, my whole life, really, I have tended to agree with the mass uh, collective, I guess you could say. So Rotten Tomatoes, I really trust that. Reviews on Amazon. But haven't you... Haven't you had scenarios in which there's a movie that reviewed very poorly? But, but then, I still liked it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Like, yeah. I think of uh, the first Suicide Squad. Like, yeah. people couldn't stand it. I loved I it. I liked it. I yeah. thought it was great. You know, yeah. granted, do I think they could have done better? Yes, there's some things they should have done. But so to me, I've had more moments like that with movies than I have video games. Yeah. So. All right, brother. I'm kind of happy and sad we watched that. <laughs> I know what I'll be doing over Labor Day. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad it comes out next week. So, yeah. all right, man. I think that's another one in the can. I'm bring us home. Yeah. Uh, we just want to thank everybody for listening in or watching. Uh, we're trying to bring you content that uh, not only is exciting to you, but matters to us, things that interest us. And uh, 
we want to uh, keep going. You know, we've got the Apple keynote uh, coming up. I'm Soon. super excited about it. Yep. I may have some new items to show. Well, I just have to see how that keynote goes. I also think we're due time for an interview. I think we need to yeah. pull we somebody in. We've got a, we've got a backlog of people that we've been working on, and we just it's honestly this summer's been so busy. But now that we're heading into a normal flow of the normal year, maybe we'll be able to get back into it. So yeah, all right, we'll everybody, definitely work on that. Yeah, thank you for watching, and you all have an awesome week, and we will catch you on twenty six. Yep. See ya.